from Kirsch Get Tom Rx. It's the, 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 the Tom Likish Show. Shut your goddamn mouth. I'm trying to listen to Tom Likish. Bitch. And now, and now, here he is. Tom Likish. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likish Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show with is Not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Welcoming back to our microphone here, the pit bull of comedy, Bobby Slayton. Bobby, good to see you. It's been a while, Tom. It's been a long one. It's been a long time, you know, and I'll tell you, the last time I saw you, you know, I, I now have my full-time gig at Hooters Casino in Las Vegas, which I'm not here to plug my gig. I'm here to see you and rehash old times and talk about wine and broads and relationships and your trip to all over the world, you international playboy, picking up strange women and strange diseases. But here's what's great. Well, you guys have moved to this movie studio. I, um, and I guess you're not allowed to talk about what the studio is, but it doesn't matter. I did a Clueless here. I did Wayne's World 2 here. My little brother is visiting me from out of town. And I said, have you ever been to a movie studio? He goes, well, I went on the Universal tour. I go, well, why don't we come, come with me to Tom Likas' show? And while I'm doing the show, you can walk around. They happen to be filming a couple of shows out here. And as we came in the main gate, you know what he says to me? This is Colossal Pictures. Jed Clampett bought this for Jethro, so Jethro could become a producer. <laughs> that, to me, did, did you know? Did you guys know this was Colossal Pictures? <laughs> Colossal Pictures from the Beverly Hillbillies. See, you know, I'm so fascinated by this kind of stuff. You know, oh, it's, yeah. but see, it's so funny when when I got here. You know, I, I've done I don't know a couple of dozen movies, whatever. But I just was walking around showing my brother uh, Martin Lewis's original dressing room. And, you know, if you go to some of the sets and some of the lots here, you know, they have all the Martin Lewis movies were all shot here. And Martin Lewis is so big in 53 to 56 that if Elvis Presley wanted this corner dressing room, he could only get it if Martin Lewis weren't using it. That's how big. I mean, Elvis was probably the biggest star in the world. But yet Martin Lewis, you know, was so big at the studio, whatever it's called. And um, they were really terrific. Colossal pictures. Uncle Jeff, <laughs> put me a studio. <laughs> meanwhile, speaking of, uh, can I get one word in? It's just great to see you again. <laughs> Good to see you. You know, meanwhile, I know you're traveling all over the world. You don't have time to come to Vegas, but this is probably the coolest gig I've ever had in my life. Hooters Casino not only built me a showroom. I mean, it's not the Mirage. It's not the Mandalay Bay, but it's a great, great little showroom. And I put together a video, which I, I should have brought you a copy. I, but I forgot that one with the bottle of wine and all the other gifts I always bestow upon <laughs> you when I come here. I just, I just forgot them. But um, I, I got Jay Leno and Robin Williams and Ray Romano and all these top comics to do this film. Not a testimonial, but pretty much busted my chops about how awful my show was. But every one of these guys had come to my show. And they said, Bobby, you know, what's great about Hooters is I can get away with stuff that these guys can't get away with on other, at other casinos because of the high rollers and all the big gamblers. But it's Hooters. There are no high rollers. You know, they see a guy at the $10 table, get him a salad. You know, it's like they're thrilled to death. So I can just do stuff that, it's great. Because, you know, you're in radio. I mean, you've been muffled over the years. You've been stifled. Oh, yes. I mean, I, you know, I can't even say what studio I'm broadcasting from, for God's sake. Uh-huh. And I know the people you work for. I know a lot of stuff's come down with. I mean, it's every month with radio. You guys are getting, you know, cramped on with the words and you can't make sexist or controversial remarks. And I think, Comedy shows the last bastion of free speech in this country. What bitch said we can't make sexist remarks? Oh, well, see, at least, she, at least you're getting away with that still. My wife. But, um. Someone who can't understand normal thinking. No, yeah, no. yeah, there you go. See, you can still say that. There you go. Hey. By the way, my wife is so funny because she hates my act. For some reason, she enjoys listening to your show. And I go, how do you like Lycus and not like me? And I guess it's maybe because she doesn't live with you. She doesn't see you day after day, 24-7. You know, it's like, I also the Vegas gives me great. I'm gone. <laughs> I'm out of LA five days out of the week. I'm over these two days. And I, and I, it's just, it's been a great gig. So my wife comes to Vegas last week. It's the first time. She's been about three times in the six months. I've had this gig. So we get to my room, and of course I'm staying at Hooters. You know, they give me a nice little suite there. And my wife says to me, so here's what I'm going to do now. Now that you can afford it, I'm getting new breasts. 
And I go, no, wait, I've never been, a, I've never been really a breast guy. I don't really even care. But now I'm getting new breasts, and you're paying for them. I go, honey, it doesn't do me any good because the new breasts are still connected to the old woman. See, if I had a new woman with new breasts, or a new old woman, with, I, I, I can work with, you know, an old woman with a new woman with old breasts. But you know, it's just you're making this very confusing for me. It's just hey, awful. And, and let's face it, your wife's got five free days every week, and uh, you know, and I'm paying for everything. That's right. Yeah. And so, you need new breasts with all that free time. And so you, uh, no, 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 no new wives on the uh, horizon no, for you? No, 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 there's no new wives on the horizon. And how many, have you been married how many times? Four. Yeah. And it's enough already, right? Yeah. Because I get these friends, like, you know, our, our buddy, our, I, you probably haven't talked to him for a long time, but a friend, Al Goldstein, one of the yes. kings of porn, who, uh, you know, had five wives. Every one of them has taken for everything he has. He was a very rich man, and now he's living in a small apartment in Queens that Penn and Teller are paying for. You know, you know the weirdest thing about Al Goldstein, if, if people who don't remember, Al Goldstein was the publisher of Screw Magazine, which Al was the first to tell right. you was the most vulgar magazine of all time. First. Uh, he'll be the first to tell you. Um, here's the thing. Al Goldstein, who I knew for many years, here's a guy who, who proudly called himself a pornographer. This guy was the most romantic sucker in the entire world. He fell in love. He fell hard. He didn't have prenups. Uh -uh. I mean, you would think this guy would be like a vulture. And, and no, he was the exact opposite. This guy would fall in love. And what happened to him? Broke. 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 And that's why when you, you know, look, when I, you know, when I got married 20 years ago, I said to my wife, I want a prenup. And she goes, you don't have anything. See, I thought at the time, I was so naive. I thought when you get a prenup, what it means is if I ever get stuff, you can't touch any of it. But, of course, now we know what it means is if you have stuff, she can't get any of the stuff you already have. And you accumulated and acquired before you met her. But I thought anything I ever get, she can't have. But, but you, you can put that in. You can. Yes. Oh, well, I know you can. And, I did. And, and it worked, right? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> See, it's like wedding vows. Who's you know, your attorney? Fire See, him. Right. Yeah, you, it's, but it's like wedding vows the same way. Have it in your vows. Don't have you promise to love and obey and cherish and sickness and health. This is a dead end, rat's ass thing. Because, you know, you go to Bed Bath & Beyond, a blender, you have two months to take it back. You have a car, you have a lemon law. But you promise to love, obey, cherish. As soon as you say, I do, goodbye stuff. Done. <laughs> Screw it. Out the window. Right? Of course. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. Nobody knows it better than I do. And you know what? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I should have got married there. But back then, I didn't know. <laughs> it wouldn't be, honey, that was great. I got to go. See you later. Isn't it's, that romantic? It's, it's there the you are. You're in Vegas where you got married. Well, you see, when I got, well, I got married in, um, see, I, see, I don't get why people get married in Vegas. You know, I don't get it. Because, you know, Vegas is the honeymoon capital of the country. It's also the suicide capital of the country. <laughs> and then, I mean, you stop and you think, and then you wonder why the windows don't open all the way. Because some <laughs> schmuck wakes up in the morning with no money. You got a wife. You got a hangover. And then, you know, no wonder you want to kill yourself. It's right. just stupid. Exactly. Stupid. Oh, I'm exhausted. It's, it's tiring being me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're working, like, regularly now at Hooters. You're yeah. working there all the time. Well, what's really cool is I used to come on your show all the time and, you know, plug my little gigs at the Improv, which are great, and all the places I was playing around the country. But Hooters built me the showroom. And like I said, you know, they let me do whatever I want to do. It's... Um, you know, we do about eight, nine shows a week, and it's beautiful because um, I stay right there. I don't have to go anywhere. And, you know, I'm not a big gambler, not a big drinker. I don't really have any major vices that I didn't have here in L.A. that I can't, you know, ha roll over into Vegas. You know, although, you know, but you know, but, but you, but you know, but you know it's interesting, Tom. No, no, let me ask you this. Yeah. I'm not a big strip club fan. Are you a big? No, no. no. But you've been to them, of course. Yes. If you're not stripping in my room, it doesn't right. do me any good. I don't get it, because here are all these comedians. Call me every day. Hey, you want to play golf? No, I don't want to play golf. Um, and I know I need to take up a hobby. i got to find something to do, because the town's... It's, I love Vegas, but it's driving me a little nuts. i got to find something to do. I basically go out to eat a lot. There's all these great Italian restaurants. Yeah. Uh, Grimaldi's Pizza from New York is there. Rayo's from New York, you know. i got all these wonderful places. Great steakhouses. Rayo's great... from New York is there? Rayo's. Oh, Rayo's. Rayo's. Okay. My favorite restaurant in Harlem is uh, in Caesars. A place called Monterano's. I'm not trying to get free food, but maybe this will work. Um, all these guys are... I, I just think every restaurant from around the world and around the country, they've opened up these outposts in Vegas. But Here's the problem. You were just in Italy and France. Yes. And there are some restaurants that rival some of the finest restaurants that you'll find in Italy or France. But here's the difference. You know, you could do whatever you want to build a canal and a Ponte Vecchio and an Eiffel Tower, and you can have five-star restaurants. But when these fat bastards come in in shorts and a Budweiser T-shirt and an armless <laughs> stupid hat, you might as well be in Kansas. You know what I mean? It's awful. You know, I mean, Vegas does... See, the real Eiffel Tower is just people in burkas now coming up there. Oh, oh, oh which, by the way, which, by the way, when was the last time you were in Vegas? Uh, I, well, it's been a while. Okay. I think it's been a year. 
with all due respect to all your tremendous Muslim listeners that I know you have, Tom, you see these people in burkas, you know, dressed up like beekeepers, walking down the street, and and, and, and Muslims, look, you know, I, I don't get it, because these people don't drink, they don't gamble, they don't go to strip clubs, they don't like porno, they don't masturbate, they don't go into nice restaurants, why are you in my world? And a few nights ago, I'm in New York, New York, and there's Arab women walking all around, it's just like a slap in the face. You know, the Lux is shaped like a pyramid, it's across the street, use that as your headquarters. Look at his great rat bastards, I never liked them from day one. We'll take a break, we'll come back with Bobby Slayton. He's appearing Wednesday through Sunday at the Night Owl Showroom at oh, Hooters God Casino. I, I kill you. <laughs> Hooters Casino Hotel in Las Vegas. It's right there on Tropicana. You can't miss it. And uh, you can get tickets. So you can call 866-80-SHOWS or you can go to Vegas.com. Bobby Slayton will continue with your telephone calls coming up. Tom Rogers. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I got a question for you, man. My girlfriend found my porn collection, and she's kind of mad at me. She thinks that masturbation is just like cheating. How old are you? I'm 18. At 18, masturbation is not only a birthright, it's a necessity. The Tom Likas Show. Tom like his show at one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Bobby Slayton is here. Now appearing regularly Wednesday through Sunday at Hooters Casino Hotel in Las Vegas. It's pretty cool, man. I'll tell you. It's you know it's Hooters, and they're really great people. But they put this nice little show for me. You know, your producer Gary just said to me, so your wife's okay with this? I said, you know what? I'm there five days out of the week. When I was playing comedy clubs, I was gone four days out of the week. And, you know, there are times when you know, she gets a couple of... Uh, you know, white Zinfandels, and you know the broads. I know, I know that's not why, but um, you know she'll get all crazy, and you know, no, it hurts me when you look at all these Hooters girls. What well, hurts you? I can't nail them. I mean, how much it hurts me? I mean, <laughs> believe me, I got my crotch in a vice right now when it hurts you. But you know what? It, it is what it is. And I'll tell you what's great about Hooters. I mean, it's like the only American casino. There's no gladiators or pirates or tigers or magic or kids or water slides or kids or ventriloquists or impressionists or kids. No, they, it's just Hooters and chicken wings and me and gambling. I mean, you don't really need anything else. The same and, with Bugsy and how, about, how about the how about the talent? Do they step it up with the Hooters girls? The Hooters girls are pretty um, pretty hot. You know, I walk through there and it's like, oh my god, oh my god. I mean, it's really uh, yeah, they're pretty hot. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It's it's pretty amazing there, and they 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 just they're really. Be, I, but see, what they have at Hooters is what's kind of cool. Is they have you know regular tables you can gamble at, but then there's a little area where Hooters girls deal cards and you know they're not that bright so if you distract them enough you can sometimes stick on 22 <laughs> you could probably get away winning on 23 you just got to be really quick and maybe a shiny object to distract them for a second and hey, it's pretty good it's a great little hotel uh-huh. and you know I you know it's funny too you know Bugsy Siegel you know everybody in Vegas talks about you know Vegas you know the old days when Bugsy was there oh that's when Vegas was Vegas Bugsy oh yeah the mob knew how to run a casino but you know Bubsy, Bubsy, Bugsy was hit, and he killed him within six months. Because Bugsy, the flamingo was falling apart, the food sucked, the service sucked, the toys were backed up. That's what we're trying to do with Hooters, and nobody appreciates it. Now, Hooters is a great American casino, and nobody appreciates all the effort they're putting in. <laughs> Nothing's working right there, but it's a great little place. And I love those guys. Let's take some calls here for Bobby Slayton. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Derek on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, man, how's it going? Great. Cool. Hey, I got something to say to this comedian guy you have on, if you don't mind. All right, already I can tell this comedian guy. Bobby Slate, Hooters, Wednesday through Sunday. What's your problem? All right, well, I got this question in. I just want to know, I, I mean, I was listening. I was thinking, yeah, I should maybe go see this guy in Vegas. I'm planning a trip in a couple of weeks. But I want to know how much of his bit is based on things like his terribly awful comments about Muslim women and the burkers and all that because personally, you know, I think it's kind of weak when people have to do that because... I don't have to. I like to. And let me tell you something. I have no problem with Muslim women and the burkas. I mostly talk about my wife and Mexicans and gays and blacks. They're good subjects. But here's the thing. Muslim women, why are they in Vegas and why are they walking around? They don't gamble. They don't drink. They don't do anything. Why do you have to rub my nose and you know, and you're dressed up like burkas. You're, you're barbaric, savage. You, It's a horrible... I mean, you can Keep, do you dress your wife like that? Would you like if your mother kept your father like that? Muslim women, you know, these cultures and over in the Middle East, they can't, they can't drive. They can't talk back to their husbands. They can't go to school. There's bad things, too. I'm just trying to show you the good stuff. 
Well, I know there's a lot of bad things going on, but I'm just saying, you know, maybe you ought not to be so narcissistic because it's not all about you. I mean, they're just doing what they want to do. They're and they want to do what they want to do. And Michael Vick, and Michael Vick did what he, yeah, street, yeah, you know? that's right. They do what they want to do. And Michael Vick does what he wants to do. And drug drivers do what they want to do. As long as people do what they want to do. And, and yeah, and oppress women. You know what? You, you can't oppress women. You can make fun of them like me and like us do. And that's enough. Okay? God is good. But, but where is that in, the, in your in your humor? I mean, why is that? That's, uh, you know what? Do me do me a favor. Don't come see me. Go see Carrot Top. I'll get you free tickets. Go <laughs> go see Carrot Top, Celine Dion. Okay, and go see Me Menopause Musical because you sound like you're on the rag right now. Okay, and then I'll send you the vagina monologues. I, I get a lot of shows for you to do. Don't come see me. You're not allowed. <laughs> banned. Banned for my show. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Well, you know, on nine eleven, people did what they wanted to do too. Carrie, can't you screen calls better than this? <laughs> see, I like calls like that. You know what? I look. I know how good I am, and so do you, Tom. But you know, when people call up and they go, "Hey, Tom, we love you. You're our favorite." But you know what? That's that's fine for a couple of minutes. Okay, I get it. I'm making a lot of money. People are paying. But it's when people bust your chops. So why are you listening? Why? That's what makes it fun. You know what I mean? They keep listening. They keep listening. They they get mad at the content. They get mad at me. They get mad at the guests. Hey, but they keep listening. Yes, and Muslim women can do whatever they want to do. I look. I would not discriminate against somebody. I would not beat somebody up or or hurt somebody. But I'm going to make fun of them. If you're Indian, you have a dot on your head. I have to comment about that. If you're a Jew and you're dressed up in one of those stupid gunslinger outfits, I'm Jewish. You're an idiot. I got to make fun of you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't like people. I'm not thinking, okay, I don't like my own people. I think Jewish women are probably the major cause of homosexuality in America today. <laughs> if I had to come home, how are you? How was your day? I'd be doing another guy in a second. If I was married to Fran Drescher, I'd shoot myself in the forehead. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You still can't come to my show, Jack. Yes. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Bobby Slayton is here. This is Dan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah, uh, Tom. First of all, yeah. we love you, down here in Irvine. Thank you. And, this uh, guy's calling Bobby all the way in from Irvine. Irvine. How's the signal? How is the signal in Irvine tonight? Can you hear me? You are funny, I guess man. not. I was just rolling around. I'm just talking to myself Thanks here. Time. I, why do I bother? I come to you work. So I come right, and I talk, try to talk to the people that want to talk years. to me. And Sorry? I've been waiting for one time as oh. my wife. When I come through the door. Do you have anything to say to me at all? Am I invisible? And it hasn't happened yet, Bobby. He's talking to me, Tom. Can't have one of my fans. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't hear what you said because Tom took over. You know, Tom acts like this is his show, you know? And I get my fans calling up. You know, they, you wait months and months to hear me, and then Likas has to take over every damn time. Your show is great, Bobby. Thanks, and, man. Uh, I had a good time, and you guys have a good afternoon. Thanks, brother. All right, thank you. Appreciate the call. Nice having that little dialogue we had. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. The guy refused to acknowledge I was even speaking. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. It's Jay on the Tom Likas show. We're here with Bobby Slayton. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Jay. I'm the girl. I guess I love and hate you. My boyfriend listens to you all the time, and at first I thought um, uh, I had a stereotype of you, but I think you probably can help me out. But I can. I'm 30. I've got, I've got the magic I'm, fingers here. Huh? Go ahead. I'm 30. I'm uneducated. I got a boyfriend. Uh, shows. In sales. Yes. He tries to help me um, by letting me work with him. But it's like I want my own gig, and I want to know how, what can what can I do? Do you think it's any hope for me? And I'm a single parent also. Why'd you do that? Because you're Jewish. Listen to it. By having, by having sex when you need it, I guess. Well, I don't know. It's called birth control, darling. Did you consider it? Yeah, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, but she's eight. I'm 30. I was going to say, so I thought I waited long enough. He, wait, wait, wait. I, was, well, I thought I waited long enough to have sex. I was a virgin since, like, 19, and I thought I was going to be... You, you've been a virgin something. since you were 19, so in other words, you were not a virgin <laughs> until you were 19, and then after that, you became a virgin? No, I mean that I was. It just happened. So, so you got pregnant the first time you had sex. I I did, but I had a miscarriage, and then I got pregnant again. Uh, so, after you uh, got pregnant, did you consider birth control? I uh, um I I I really don't have sex like that like that. I like what? Have, I don't have sex like that. My boyfriend I have now, he don't want no kids or nothing like that. He, yeah, well, how about you use birth control? Then you can have sex. Um, I, I, sex ain't my 
my issue no more. My issue is how can I overcome what I done, the mistake I done made, or is it any? Well, first of all, I'm trying to help you not repeat that mistake, dear. Okay, I don't think that mistake has been eight years. I don't think I'll never have another baby. Well, dear, if you have sex without yeah. using birth control, you might have another baby. Yeah, but we 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 cautious. We cautious. We no, put dear. Our vibe and no, no, that doesn't work, dear. You're you you just admitted to us you're uneducated. I'm telling you that's a myth. That doesn't work. It's been working for eight years, dear. <laughs> you've just been lucky. Okay, I can do that. I can do why, that. Why do you object to using birth control? Why, why do you have a problem I with that? I don't know. Just a scary. I think. You're I think afraid of birth of control? I'm scared of some, like, putting, I'm, I'm scared of pills and everything anyway. You don't have to use pills. There's, there's, there's 11 forms of birth control for women. You can use any one of them. How about you tell him to use a condom? Did you try that? Um, yeah, I use them. Just don't like them. Yeah, you don't like them. Do you like uh, having a child or living in poverty? Do you like that? No, I don't. So would you? Do you dislike condoms more than you dislike poverty? I don't. I don't. I don't even be tripping on sex like that. My my boyfriend with now, we don't have sex like that. Yeah, but when you do have it, mm-hmm. you you need to use condoms. Okay, that's understood. You need to, right? Yes. Right. Yes. So you got to start telling him he has to wear a condom. Okay. What happens if he has sex with somebody else? If he, well, that's I be with him every day. We he he. Where he, is he right he, now? He'd be surprised if I'm calling right now. He's, Where is he's he? Over there installing cable while I'm in the car right yeah, now. Yeah. Well, I, a lot of these guys lay a lot more than cable. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. What happens if some woman uh, gets free HBO and uh, offers to pay him for it? In her way. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. And what happens if uh, she's a heroin addict and she shares needles with uh, her neighbor? And then you go and have sex with your boyfriend there uh, without using uh, a condom. It's understood, Tom, but is there any hope for me? Like, well, we're going to get to that, dear. Not not catching AIDS and not getting pregnant are two important ways to, to keep out of poverty. Okay. Right. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you got to think about that stuff, dear. That's how you get yourself into trouble. You're right. All right. Now, the the, the rule number one is don't get in any more trouble. Be okay. responsible. Use condoms. Find out about female forms of birth control that are not the pill. Mm-hmm. Go to Planned Parenthood. They do it cheap or even free if you're poor. Right. Yeah. Okay. You know where Planned Parenthood is. Yes. Go there. Go there. Take your boyfriend with you. Go to Planned Parenthood. All right. I've, I've been there. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, what can I do about what can I do about some money, quick money, so I can be there? Dear, dear, there's no quick money. Oh yeah, there's. How about raising pit bulls? Get them fighting. <laughs> Come on, work for Michael Vick. He made a fortune. Come on, he's out of business. Take up the slack. <laughs> It's nothing that I can go to school for that you know that can, I can make my quick money. Yeah, there's no, something. there's no quick money. There's or money. Any, and, and, or and, any and, advice and something I could do take. Do you have a high school? I'm, like I say, I'm thirty. Do you have a high school diploma? Do you have a GED? No. Why not? Because I just don't. All right. Well, you need to do that. Okay. There's free classes to get a GED right in your neighborhood. Yeah. So do I'm, it. Yeah, I, I, and then after that, then what? Well, then you've got a high school diploma, okay? And then you get a better line of work than you get if you don't have one. Okay. See? So you'll be eligible for better jobs than you can get now, right? Yeah. Hang on a second. Rihanna, what did you want to say to Jay? Hi there. Hi there. How's it going? Wait, I do oh. care. <laughs> I'm doing great. And, and uh, you were going to say something to Jay. What did you want to say? Yeah, I basically want to tell her, I mean, I know that you're 30 and that you don't have your high school diploma or anything, but there are a lot of options. I mean, you could go to any junior college and a lot of them offer financial aid. And especially being a single mother, I'm sure that you could actually, I mean, I think they offer up to like $5,000 or something like that to help you with your education. And a lot of them offer childcare too. So... There's a lot of options for you. If you just go to your local junior college and ask a counselor, I'm sure they'll help you out. Okay. 
right. Just, I mean, the only quick, yeah, the only the only quick money out there is selling crack or whoring yourself out. Okay, that's the quick money. Oh, what's wrong with that? Why is that a problem? Well, it doesn't take that long. It takes like at least a couple of weeks to get to financial aid. But I mean, no, 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 no. Well, she, no, no. She out. said she said she wanted quick money. There's no quick money. It doesn't sound like she's worried about her education. There, it just sounds like she's worried about the money. Well, I mean, I well, know. If she I really mean, cares enough. Too. I mean, you should you should do research. How are you going to be calling a a talk show to find out how to better your education? I mean, go to a library, look at a computer, figure out something. I mean, it's not that difficult. Just because you're uneducated doesn't mean that you're not that you're that you're stupid. You know, it just means that you're lazy. All right, you give that some thought, dear. Thank you. Appreciate the call. God, maybe she's lazy and stupid. But you know what? Hey, I'm a, I'm a really, hey, Tom, I'll tell you something. I'm a very lucky man, Bobby Slayton at Hooters. But here's the thing. I, I did not go to college, and I really sucked at school. I I don't believe in God or a higher power or guardian angels, but I'll tell you right now, my brother, somehow things fell into line for me because I didn't do stand-up comedy. I don't know what I'd be doing. So I really feel bad when people call up and they have these questions, they have these issues, because you know what? I don't know what I would have done. I have no talent whatsoever. You know, people picked on me when I was in high school, so I have a few vodkas, I attack back, and uh, learn how to defend myself a little, you know, verbally, and <laughs> as much as I can physically, which isn't much, but my God, thank God, you know, things aligned and the great powers that be, so I feel bad for that, bro. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with hooking and, and, and selling dope, and you know, you just write that off. I'm not saying it's, a, it's the best thing to do, but you know, you and I'd be doing that if we never job. Come on, so... Bobby Slayton's here, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here comes Mill on the Tom Likas Show for Bobby Slayton. Hello. Hi, Tom and Bobby. Uh, Tom, I just wanted to relate a quick story about Bobby when he was first coming up. I, I was at the Ice House in Pasadena with my wife at the time, and we were uh, watching Bobby's show. This was about 18 years oh ago. Oh, my God. And this is amazing because... My wife had had dinner that night. We'd had dinner at the restaurant, and she had concealed a roll in her purse. And when Bobby went off on this tirade, just telling women exactly the way it was, and the audience was rolling, my wife reaches into her purse, pulls out a roll, flings it from the first row, and hits Bobby Slayton right in the groin. A roll of what? A roll of money? <laughs> no, this was a bread roll. A roll? She had a and roll fun, in her purse? And the funny thing is, Tom, as quick as it hit Bobby in the groin and he, and he rolled down, he picked the roll up off the stage and said, obviously, a woman with a yeast infection. <laughs> I guess you had to be And there. I mean to tell you, from that moment on, I knew my relationship with my wife was going out the door. Now, how, are you still married to her? No, I dumped that bitch a long time ago. But wait, but wait, what's interesting, I, you know, I've taken food home from restaurants, and my, my, my grandmother did stuff like that, you know, but uh, why would you put a roll in your purse? Was it Exactly. That's what I said. And then, and, and Tom, the funny part was, he, I mean, he didn't miss a beat. Uh, everybody in the audience was stunned, and he just reached down, picked the roll up, and goes, obviously, a woman with a yeast infection, and... Never, never stop. See, broke, now, broke uh, into another bit. See, now I'm an old Jew. I probably would have taken the roll, and I probably would have saved it. I, you know, I would have put it in my purse and saved it for later. But, 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 but Tom, when he said a roll, didn't you think it meant a roll of cash? I thought like a she, roll of nickels. She, she, was only a roll of yeah, I see something with money. She had a roll. That's something my grandma Shirley would do. Oh, my God. Well, well, we thank you for the call. Bobby Slayton is here. You can see him Wednesdays through Sundays at the Night Owl Showroom at Hooters Casino Hotel in Las Vegas. You can call 866-80-SHOWS or go to Vegas.com. More with Bobby and your phone calls coming up. Ooh, get it, get it. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. Tom Likas. As I have said on this program many times, if Helen Keller had a granddaughter who's a 9 or a 10, that's a perfect match. And by the way, honey, by the way, honey if you're out there, ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. Thank you for tuning in. Bobby Slate is here, appearing at Hooters Casino Hotel in Las Vegas. It's a relatively new place, right? It, uh... it was the San Remo until a year ago. And Hooters, you know, it's right off the strip. It's right next to the Tropicana. It's right across from the MGM. Oh, which, by the way, have you, when was the last time you were in Vegas? 
I think it was about a year ago. Okay, here's what I love about that town. Not only the great restaurants. You know, again, I'm not a big gambler. I don't go to a lot of strip clubs, which, by the way, I mentioned that earlier. Here's the thing about strip clubs that I don't understand. I have comedian friends that come by. Yeah, hey, what do you want to do? You want to go to a strip club? We go, well, I get some tea. And they go, oh, come on, you big baby, let's go to a strip club. But if you go to strip clubs, these scores and these, you know, Spearman Rhino and all these places, basically, you have these women who are not going to sleep with you. They just tease you. And they talk to you, they take your money, they talk to you, but they won't do you. You know, my wife does that. I don't need to take outside sources and pay a woman, a woman to, to just bust my chops and not sleep with me and talk to me and just, you know, tease me like that. And actually, and you have all these horny guys out there and it's just like awful. But what's great about Hooters is it, it's just this great little casino. You know, it just, it doesn't even seem like a casino. It seems like a, well, you've been to a Hooters. So it's like a Hooters with a couple of tables and my little showroom, and it's great. And when people come to Hooters and they come to see the Pimple of Comedy, you know, they expect what they're going to get. So it's really, really cool. It's great. great. Can, it's can, not, we, can we eat wings and watch you? Is that the deal? Well, actually, they don't serve food in the showroom. But, no food? But you can have food in the showroom. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and you, know, you don't have to be 18. If you're tw- I mean, you don't have to be 21. If you're 18, you can come in. It's it's just great, you know. And it's um, I, what's really interesting, when I play comedy clubs around the country, I get, I'd say in a week at a comedy club, in a week I'd get... Oh, four or five walkouts. And sometimes it's just because of the smoke in the club, or which they don't have here, or it was, you know, it was too late for somebody. But I get a few complaints. We've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shows since April. And I don't think we've had more than four or five walkouts. Wow. We've been coming to my show. Actually, I can't, I can't, I can't Probably because it's at Hooters and people, exactly. even though Hooters is not the controversial place that, that it's made out to be no, at all. Not whatsoever. And Hooters but expect I, I think people go there and they expect that. Absolutely. And you know what? That's why Hooters hired me because they said they want to bring more women in. They have all these great little slot machines. The slot machines pay off. Um, they the loosest slots in Vegas. And I'm not talking about the wait staff. I'm talking about the machines. <laughs> da, 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 hey, da, 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 bada, bing, bada, boom. Um, you know, in the old days, you stand for beer to give me a rim shot, but you got a new kid working in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. He's a new kid. Hey, I'll tell you, they're the loosest slots in Vegas. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, but it, it's just a great place. And, and, and they said when women come to the shows, it's amazing how many older women have come to the shows and how they like it. They enjoy it. I'm kind of shocked. I mean, I'm happy. I'm not trying to walk people. But there was like this newspaper. I got all these reviews and all these write-ups. The Jewish Reporter. There's a Jewish Reporter in Las Vegas. And they put this front page article. So there's old Jews that come in. Strippers that come in. And you got everything from strippers to other comedians. To, it's a nice, well-rounded. You got people from all walks of life. It's not when you play the Ontario province all Mexican. Or you go to San Francisco. It's all Asians and gays. I mean, it's fine. San, you, know, uh, you know, West Palm Beach is all old Jews. The Miami Improv's all Haitians and Cubans. You come to Vegas and you got everybody. It's not like, remember they used to say Vegas, uh, you know, a Vegas crowd made a Wayne Newton crowd. It made a, you know, Robert Goulet crowd. But now you've got Broadway shows, the Rolling Stones. You know, you got the best restaurants in the world. And you got Hooters and me. What more go. do you want? It's a new Vegas. It's a, it's a vacation paradise. For God's sake. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Bobby Slayton. This is Freddie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? Your show's the greatest. 101, you rule. You know it. Thank you. That. My question for Mr. Bobby there, has he had any uh, good stories or uh, about working with uh, Frank Sinatra at any time? Well, I never worked with Frank Sinatra, so I wish I could make up a story. I was in the Rat Pack, <laughs> I was in the Rat Pack with Ray Liotta, who played Frank Sinatra, and, I've, oh. and, and Ray is uh, gay. No, I'm kidding. No, no, no. I'm not. No, Ray. Ray. That's a, no. Ray's a great guy. No, he's the closest. I never actually got to work with Frank. Um, I went to see him once. I wish I had a story for him. Uh, oh, about him. I thought maybe you might have had to work with him or something. No, you know what? The only big, you know, see, here's the thing. I worked. I didn't work with a lot of the big, you know, musicians because a lot of those guys, you, know, you got to work really clean and be really nice. And I, my act is, and I don't think it's brutal as sex. It's a tough love program, and it gets a little uh, tough sometimes. And you know. I, you can't really, it's, uh, you're not going to see Cirque to Bobby Slayton, you know? It ain't, right. it, it ain't my kind of thing. <laughs> well, I hope to get to Vegas to see you there, Bobby. Yeah, I'm going to make up some stories, though, for the next people to call about Sinatra, because he's dead. I, I, I should make him some you stories. You can say anything. Yeah, though. absolutely. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you, Freddie. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Bobby Slayton is here in studio. Let's say hello to Maria on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hi, my name is Sophia. I've been listening to you. Your, for a your long name is time. what now? Sophia. Sophia. Okay, Sophia. Mm-hmm. And I'm calling from. Because Dean says you just changed your name from Maria to Sophia. Yeah, because he... you told me I have to use a fake name. That's what they said. He, she told he told you not to use a fake name or to use a fake name. To use a fake name. Oh well, you can use. You don't have to use a fake name. 
Oh, okay. Well, anyways. Is I... your name Maria? Yes. Okay, I can Maria. tell she's ready to bitch about something. I just see it in her voice, Tom. Yeah. There's a problem here somewhere. You can tell this broad's got an agenda. That I have what? An agenda. What? What is your agenda, Maria? No, what I'm calling about is because I was really curious on how you look like, so I went on the internet. I'm hideous. Oh, I'm hideous. No, and I just wonder, then how do you get all these chicks and you don't buy them anything when you're not good looking at all? Well, because I have money, power, and fame. And by the but way, you just don't to... give it to them. No, so because they are... don't know that until after I've gotten what I want. You don't understand. You know, well, we, they we... don't listen to you and know that? Many of them, but dear, don't assume that everybody I date is a listener of the Tom Likas show. Oh, that's so funny. So they think they're going to be the exception or My something? audience is primarily men. Most of the listeners are not women. Oh, and I so... know. All oh, right, well, so when I... I just... I just have to say that. All I have to do when I meet a woman is to tell her how wealthy I am and how successful I am. That's it. You know what, Maria? You know what you have to understand? You look at so many guys, from Michael Bolton, who looks like Uncle Creepy, to all these fat celebrity men and ugly men. and But it, like, just like Tom said, if you're famous, you're rich, you have a, a hint of power, success, women will go for you. With most guys, I don't care how much money Rosie O'Donnell had. If she was straight and bought me a sailboat, I wouldn't do her in a second. Because guys, mm-hmm. believe it or not, do have some scruples. Because women always say, guys, they'll sleep, they'll sleep with anything. You'll sleep with anybody for any reason. Not true. Women will sleep with anybody for any reason if they have money and power and fame. Oh. Well, I love listening to your show because everything you say is a sat, true, and all these girls out here are just a bunch of sluts trying to get money. And That's you know, right. I love your show, and I just wanted to meet you because I was really curious. On what you, you want do you want to meet me to find out what I look like? No, I already looked you up. So. Oh, so you already know. Yes, I just wanted to have an idea. I just started listening to you. By well, then why did you call me and ask me what I looked like if you already knew? You see, that's that's the idea. You think you're being cute or coy here by doing this. You already knew what I looked like. No, I said I barely looked you up, so I just found out. Well, then you didn't have to call in and ask me. I mean, at the beginning of this call, two and a half minutes ago, you asked me what I looked like. No, I now, said I looked you up in the Internet. Now you admit you've seen me on the Internet. Yeah, so that's why I said... Well, then I if you'd curious. already seen me, you don't have to ask me what I look like. You already you know. I what you look like. I said that I had to look you up in the internet because you I was... You did really ask curious. me what I look like. Don't make me play the tape. <laughs> don't embarrass yourself. I'm not embarrassing myself. You, 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 you the first me thing you I asked me because I responded and I said I'm hideous. That was a response to your question, what do I look like? No, I said I had to look you up because I was curious, and then... No, I you asked me what I look like. To, please, stop this, okay? I'm not stupid, okay? You said that, and I responded, I'm hideous. Now, please, you're embarrassing yourself by continuing to deny that you asked me that question, because you did. Okay, whatever. Whatever. But, anyways, I was just curious because I... Are you going to keep I repeating? How many times are you going to repeat the same content? Do you have anything else to say? Or are you going to force me to commit uh, uh, euthanasia on this call? Because uh, it sounds to me like you've run out of juice, and now you're going to keep repeating the same phrases over and over. Is that what you're going to do? No, I just. Why? Why? To, to say, say something new. Say something. Okay, it. great. Thanks. That's great. Oh, she, you know, Tom, she, you are not hideous. I think you're quite cute. And well, you know what? Thank you, if Bob. you take me on your next trip to Europe, I'll tell you that on really? the whole flight over, <laughs> and I'll rub your shoulders. <laughs> but if, if you come with me to France, I'm going to give you the big baguette. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> uh, with a glass of wine, I can handle it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh, yes, we'll go to France, Bobby and I. It'll just uh, hand in hand on the beach of Biarritz. Yes, it's going to be very exciting. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Bobby Slate is here. Uh, Gabe, can I answer your question? What did you want? Hello, Tom. Hello, Gabe. <laughs> yes. Well, that last caller. That's why you don't want to get married. Exactly. <laughs> yes, I got an avoiding question here. I, I, you know, I just don't want to. I run into um, any type of uh, spy software of any type on my computer. You don't want to have any of that on your computer, especially if you've got a. You, what do you have? A girlfriend or a wife? Uh, yeah, you definitely do not want to have Spectre's, uh, Spectre Soft's uh, Spectre Pro on your computer. And the reason is because if you used it without telling her, first of all, that, that could be illegal. And you don't want to do anything illegal. And second of all, if you use that software, which is $99 at SpectreSoft.com, what would happen is that you might then find out all her passwords or email accounts. Those are private. You don't have a right to know that stuff. Definitely and and you might be able to read her email, what she's been writing to people, and read the content of her chats and instant messages. 
So uh, if you don't go to Spectresoft.com, you will not be tempted to use your credit card, charge it for $99, and download it immediately and sell it on your computer, because that would be wrong. All right? Don't do that. Bobby Slayton, Wednesday through Sunday at Hooters Casino, 866-80 shows. Go to Vegas.com. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Tom. We'll see Bobby Slayton in Las yeah. Vegas. Bye. God damn it. The Tom Likas Show.